What is going on everybody? I wanna help you brew better coffee at home. And today, to do that, we're gonna compare two espresso machines. Now, before you click off and say this is a waste of time or this is a stupid clickbaity video, I promise you it's not because this is something that's been requested to me so many times. So we're doing this video. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make this fair. So stick around at the end. I'm gonna tell you which one you should buy on your situation and also I'm gonna talk about why someone should actually buy this machine over this one. Now, before you go any further, if you have not yet subscribed, I would highly encourage you to consider doing that. I just wanna help you brew better coffee at home and be a resource to you. So many more videos like this one to come, including comparisons on a few entry-level grinders in the next few weeks. Let's talk about the price of these two machines. I just finished a review and tips and tricks on this machine. So if you haven't yet watched that, up above, check that out. This machine is around $700. The Breville Barista Express is one of the most popular home espresso machines. And there's good reason for that because it comes with a built-in grinder. And many people getting into this craft of home espresso don't have a grinder. So I get it. This is a great option for so many people getting into espresso at home. But on this side, we have the Lilith. Bianca. Now I'm gonna try and be as unbiased as I can in this video because this video is we're, we're just having we're just having some fun. You know, we're comparing these two grinders. This, this is not something people would normally do. The Lolite Bianca is a prosumer level machine where this one's an appliance. The Bianca comes in around three thousand dollars USD, and in Canada we're talking almost four thousand dollars for this machine. Here's the problem with that: it doesn't come with a grinder. You need to buy an espresso grinder for this machine. We're using 40 millimeter burrs in this grinder. It comes with a tamper. It uses a 54 millimeter port of filter. And while I find that's probably its biggest low point, it still offers a lot of value. It has a thermal block instead of a boiler. And so what that'll do is it will heat water on the fly, which leads to quick warm up times. It's ready to brew. That's like 30 seconds. One big downside in a machine that uses a thermal block or a single boiler is its steaming power. So I wanna compare the steaming power between these two machines, but this machine takes a few minutes to get up to full steaming power. Trust me on that. That's the one frustrating part if you like milky drinks. What else can I say about this machine? I mean, it's got lots of bells and whistles and I mean, if you want more information on this machine, again, go check out that review that I just finished on this because it has everything you need to know about this machine. Let's talk about the Lilith Bianca real quick, some specs, and then we're gonna compare these two. So this is an E61 Brew Group machine. It uses dual boilers, two stainless steel boilers at 0.7 liters and 1.5 liters, respectively. It boasts some nice walnut finishes, it has a flow control profile to be able to dial in shots and create incredible tasting flavors within your shots. It has two knobs on the front fascia, which one is for hot water and one is for steam. This group that sticks out of the front that kind of looks like a nose is always running hot water through it. That's what's so nice about the E61 brew group. There is always hot water running through this group head to keep this the same temperature as the water inside the machine ultimately leading to really consistent water temperatures within your shot. So here's what I wanna to do today, cause I don't just wanna give you specs. I wanna see if we can pull a shot from the Breville Barista Express as good as a shot from the Bianca. Now, if you think that's possible, let me know in the comments down below because we're about to test this out. Now, I would not say this is a machine that everybody should buy. First of all, it's very expensive. You could buy about four Barista Express for the same price as the Bianca. The reality is some people want to experiment with their coffee. Some people want the convenience of having a flow control paddle to be able to dial in their shots. But more so than that, this machine in theory should last much longer than this one will because this machine is serviceable, it's commercial grade and it's heavy duty. Now I'm not saying this machine is not gonna last because these machines have been around for a while and they've been known to be pretty reliable this is not built to the same quality as a machine like this. And if you wanna have a party and have all your friends over and you wanna make shots for everybody, you're not gonna do it on this guy, you're gonna do it on this guy. When it comes down to it, a machine like the Bianca will save you time, it will save you energy, but it will not save you money. But what about you? Let me know in the comments down below. Is a machine like the Bianca worth it for you? 
or would you just be happy with a $700 machine like the Breville Barista Express? All right, I wanna test these two machines and see if we can pull a shot as good on the Barista Express as the Bianca. But here's the catch. We're not gonna use this grinder because that wouldn't be fair. This is the one thing you need to know today. The espresso machine is not as crucial as the espresso grinder. Your espresso grinder will completely change the results in your cup. Your espresso machine may not. So we're gonna use the Niche Zero Grinder to compare these two and put them at an even advantage. Okay, so I've grabbed my coffee from my Bianca. I'm using an 18 gram dose for this one. I'm gonna be using 17 for this just based on basket size. So let's try this and see, based on taste, can this machine pull as good of a shot as this guy? Now I put an Instagram poll out asking you what you love and hate about these machines. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna share some of those with you and you might be featured in that. So stick around for that. So this shot pulled in about 26 seconds. Okay, so now I've grabbed my coffee for the Breville Barista Express, 17 grams. And we're gonna see if this pulls a good shot. What I notice is the crema on these are very similar. Very similar. Again, this is both using the Niche Zero, which is a very expensive home grinder. That's gonna really make this machine more comparable to a machine like this for a single shot. What you're really gonna notice is when this is pulling back-to-back -back shots, the temperature consistency on this machine is not gonna hold up to this one. It's delicious. I'm using a washed Ethiopian, roasted in Vancouver, and it's a pretty great floral, bright cup of coffee. Okay, right off the bat, I can notice a different texture in this cup than this cup. The Bianca has more of a rich, creamy texture. It's something that's really hard to explain in words, but if you've worked in a cafe, you know what I'm talking about. It's a creamy, velvet-like texture that this machine just doesn't offer. That being said, the flavors on this cup are still very great. It just tastes like it doesn't have that thick texture. And that's mostly largely in part to the rotary pump on this machine. It's a more powerful pump with a 58 millimeter portafilter. So the way that the water is interacting with the coffee is very different than the smaller portafilter. Yeah, when it comes to flavors, you're not gonna taste a huge difference in flavor from the machines. The flavor isn't gonna be drastically different, but the big difference is going to be in the quality and mouthfeel of a shot. This shot tastes like a home espresso shot. This shot tastes like it was from a cafe. And it just has this creamy mouthfeel to it. Now before you go, I wanna compare one other thing with these two machines. And this is one big variable within home espresso machines, and that is steaming power. So with this Bianca, it's a dual boiler. And so it has on-demand steam at all times as long as you have the steam boiler on. And you can have with the new version of this machine up to two bars of steam pressure, similar to what you would see at a cafe. It's a little, a little ridiculous. That'll go for as long as I want it to go. It's powerful steam. Steam that can make really good milk drinks. On the other hand, the Breville Barista Express you have to use this cheap knob on the side. It's, it's a knob. And then the machine starts flashing, letting you know that it is creating steam. Do you hear that? It's the sound of steam. It can make steam, but it's not the best at steam. It will get you into making espresso at home and it will make lattes at home for you. It's just a little quirky in terms of its steaming capabilities. A machine like the Bianca, flip of a switch, but at the end of the day, it comes down to your grinder. 
So this grinder here, the reason I didn't want to use this because it would not be a fair comparison. This grinder is a decent entry level espresso grinder for you to be able to make espresso at home, but that's about it. It's not gonna get you great quality shots. Now before you go, I put out a poll on Instagram asking what you love about these machines. For owners of the Breville Barista Express and the Lilipianka, what do you love and what do you hate about these machines? Okay, let's talk about the Breville Barista Express first. What some people love about the Breville Barista Express. They love the startup time, it's easy to clean, and the community around this machine. That's not something I've experienced. I haven't really seen a community around this machine, but could be wrong in that. They love the affordability all-in-one espresso setup. It's great for learning and easy to dial in. Garrett Hacker says, love the ease of use and convenience. Hate the step grinder and slow steam wand. People across the board, a lot of comments, you guys are saying you don't love the grinder on this. Drew says, obviously the grinder, no accurate display of temperature, inconsistent shots. Now let's go over the Bianca real quick, what people love and hate. Her Brew says, I love the dual boilers, flow control, and the overall look and everything. Can't argue with that. It's a pretty beautiful looking machine. MJCoffee.co says, I love everything about it. Okay. That boy Scott says, I love the steam power, flow control, quality, and build. Corn says, I love the new LCC. Great that they're updating the machine. On the flip side, I feel like I have an incomplete setup. I have the version one as well, and I do want to upgrade my LCC so that I can get higher steam pressure. I get it. So once again, if you haven't yet subscribed, I would really appreciate if you smash that subscribe button down below. I'm trying to create some great coffee content for you and be a resource to you. Also, don't be afraid to, in the comments below, ask any questions you may have or anything I may have missed about these machines. Let's make a great community out of this kind of conversation. And so ask me anything down below and we can talk about that. In the meantime, continue to brew great coffee and continue to brew at home. Peace, we'll see you next time. Bro, what, what, are you, what are you doing? Uh, nothing? What do you mean you're doing nothing? I mean, I just thought I would compare these two machines. That. You, you, you wanna compare that, a $700 machine against the glory of the Lalit Bianca? I mean, I thought we could just compare these two. Compare. Yeah, I mean, see if we can make as good of an espresso on a $700 machine and the Lalit Bianca. No way. No way, no way. No, we're not doing that. I mean, listen, I know people are asking for this, but I don't want to just give in to every single thing that people ask us to do. Do you want to at least try to compare these two? Who do you think I am? Gail? I mean, no. Dude, that's not going to be possible. Then let's test it. You want to test it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 